Welcome to the Doctrinal Mastery Review number three. Remember last week in review number two, I introduced some resources, uh, card resources, games, activities that you could use in your Doctrinal Mastery reviews. If you missed that, I'll put a link to, in the description to that video so that you can check out those resources. But for today, I've got a really cool activity that you can use with this review. Remember, the purpose of what we're doing here, understanding specific scripture passages and being able to explain the truths they teach is central to achieving doctrinal mastery. That's our purpose. We have a reminder about using different approaches and variety in your approaches. There's a student preparation activity. We're reminded again under the possible learning activities that if you're behind on your doctrinal mastery passage lessons, and remember there's a couple that there will be in the summer. If you don't teach in the summer, you'll miss those. Do prioritize the teaching of doctrinal mastery passage lessons. So maybe you replace this with a passage lesson if you are behind. But if you're going to teach this, let's take a look at this opening activity. Explain to the students about these different learning styles, visualizing, sharing with others, studying independently, and hands-on learning. Considering that after this, they want you to think about how the Savior tailored his teaching to meet the needs of those he taught, I thought, why don't we incorporate that right into this activity? For example, introduce these to the students, put them up on the board, display them by some means, or give them out as a handout. Review these four and then give the students a scripture. For example, Matthew 18.2. Give the students a chance to read that scripture quietly, then show them a picture and ask which of the learning styles was Jesus using? Now, this scripture is talking about how Jesus took a child, put it in the midst, and said, unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He's using the child as a visual aid. He is visualizing. So then you could share another scripture, have the students read it, think about it, and then display a picture and say, what learning style is Jesus using? In this case, Jesus is pulling his disciples together privately to answer questions about the parables that he just taught. So in that case, you might have sharing with others, the idea of speaking with others to help process things more deeply. Study independently. That scripture, there's plenty of times when Jesus went off to pray to be alone. And then stilling the storm, I tell you, if there isn't a better example of hands-on learning than, than this story. So, um, I'll put scriptures along with links to each of those four pictures in the description. You can use those or ones that you uh, would rather use or that you think would be a good example for that. So remember, you first share the scripture, then display the picture, and ask the students which learning style. Be prepared for the fact that they may not choose the answer you're thinking. For example, I think stilling the storm is a hands-on learning one, but someone could make a fair case for sharing with others as he is talking with his disciples in a small group setting or visualizing. It certainly also is visualizing. Let them explore those ideas. The point of this is to just demonstrate that Jesus uses different learning styles to tailor his teaching. Now the students will be prepared for this question. Why do you think the Savior used a variety of styles to teach others? Don't forget when you ask a question like this, expect that the students will be prepared to answer. You can give them a moment to think about it. You can say, would you think about this question for a minute? Why do you think the Savior used a variety of styles to teach others? Give them a little bit to think, and then call on students for an answer. Sarah, why do you think so? Or Ethan, what do you think about that question?
Then comes the next question, a great question. What does this teach you about him? After all this discussion, the scriptures, the images, and that previous question, they'll be ready to answer this question. But again, feel free to give them a little time. If you have a class where students just put up their hands, don't worry about it. But, and in particular, if you have a class where there are a couple of students that answer all the questions, do this approach. I want each of you to think about this question. Take 15 to 20 seconds. What does this teach you about him? After the time, then you go ahead and call on students. Tristan, what does this teach you about Jesus Christ, that he uses a variety of styles to teach others? Hannah, is there anything that you'd add to that? Colin, what do you think? What does this teach you about him? Now you're ready to get into the activities. I offer all of this with a caution. There's only so much time in a lesson, and this lesson has some great hands-on activities for your students. So you may not choose to spend too much time introducing the topic, but instead getting right into the activities. But if you feel like this will balance your time, especially depending on the size of your class, feel free to use this to get your students talking. And then jump into these great activities where the students will have a chance to visualize share with others, study independently, or demonstrate hands-on learning. Have a lot of fun with it. And remember what a blessing any time the students spend getting to better know these scriptures and applying them, how much of a blessing that can be in their lives and the lives of those with whom they may share these scriptures.